Hello and welcome to this Paratus video and today's topic is how do I license my first farm and chances are if you're watching this you're a complete newbie and you've never done this before in which case welcome this video is for you I hope it makes the process a little bit less scary and intimidating than it might seem at first glance as well as clear up maybe a few misconceptions that you've had and answer some of your questions however if you still have questions after this please get in touch leave me a comment uh, send me a message, whatever, just get in touch and I will see if I can help you and, and get you going on this journey because it is a journey, right? Fortunately, I already wrote an article about how to license a firearm, uh, what the process is. That zooms in a bit more than this video is going to on the relevant documentation requirements and where to download forms and how to go about it. It's linked in the description. Please give that a read after watching this and that might, you know, fill in a couple of the blanks and patch up a few holes. So... We're just going to dive straight into this. The licensing or rather the farm ownership process in South Africa is divided into two parts. Part one is you first need a competency card or competency certificate. And once you've obtained that, you can then apply for the license for the farm you intend on licensing. Our system's a bit stupid. You have to license every individual gun you want to own. But, you know, it's not that complicated. It sounds worse than it is. So... <laughs> First off, who qualifies to be declared competent? Now, any South African citizen, 21 years or older, unless you fulfill certain uh, special requirements which allow you to be, be declared competent and licensed guns under the age of 21, there's a separate article on that, also linked below. Not written by me, written by a really good guy called Ruben Creer. Give that a read if you're under 21. But for all intents and purposes, 21 years, 21 years or older, suffering from no disqualifying psychiatric conditions or disqualifying criminal records, you are fit and proper to, or rather you qualify to go through the process to be declared competent. Then what you've got to do is you need to find a accredited training organization, usually through the PFTC, that's the Professionals Farm Training Council website, also linked in the article. Go find an accredited training organization and go through the relevant unit standards, which is very, very clinical language for telling you you're going to need to do some studying and then a couple of tests. Okay, so the studying pertains to several aspects. There's a law module that's a separate book. There's the Farms Control Act uh, or parts of it that you need to know are going to be in there. Parts of the Criminal Procedures Act are going to be in there and other relevant legislation. So you're going to need to study that. It's a closed book and open book test. That's a separate module. Then there are the modules that apply to the guns themselves. Okay, there are several types, handguns, shotguns, manually operated rifles, and semi-automatic rifles. Now you can pick, let's say you're only interested in handguns, you can only do, choose to only do the uh, unit standards pertaining to handguns, if you want. I would personally recommend you do all of them because you get a nice big bulk book that's got all of them in it. It's gonna be a lot cheaper doing them all at once than doing them one at a time. And chances are, once you've licensed your first gun, you're going to want to own different types later. You might not. You might be the odd one out then. So I can highly recommend considering doing the big book uh, with all the required unit standards for all the different farm types in it. So as I said, there's a closed book portion to it. There's an open, well, first an open book portion that you're going to do by yourself after going through the study material. Then there's a closed book portion that you do at the actual uh training organization, a credit training organization, and then there's a practical test. Not for the law, the law module doesn't have that, but the firearm modules have a practical test. We have to demonstrate safe firearm handling and accuracy within a specified limit. Okay, once you've successfully completed these unit standards, you get something called a proficiency certificate. You then take this proficiency certificate and you fill in the required paperwork and you hand it in at the police with character references and then they and you pay them their money and then they send that off and they process it in order to get you to de be declared competent. What you can do in the meantime, that's going to take about 90 days, maybe shorter, maybe longer. OK, but that's going to take them a good three months usually to get that done. OK, that's the other thing I need to tell you about this process. It takes a bit of time, but it's worth it. OK, and the sooner you start with it, the sooner it's done. So while they're busy processing that, in the meantime, what you can go and do is set yourself up to be absolutely ready to immediately apply for your firearm license the moment your competency is approved. OK, so this involves a few things. If you already have a, a good idea about what you'd like to own, 
then go set up the required safe. If it's a rifle, go get a rifle safe. If it's a handgun, go get a handgun safe, but get the safe and fit it to your house, okay? It's gonna have to be roll bolted either into the wall or the floor as per SABS specifications and standards with the, <laughs> with the required roll bolts because that's what you're gonna need to do. The police are supposed to come do a safe inspection to make sure that you've fitted that safe properly before you're allowed to obtain a firearm license. So, you know, don't do half measures with this, get a proper safe and fit it, okay? That's one battle one. The second one is go and actually pick the gun you want to license at the dealership. If you don't know what yet, now is a really good time to start exploring the options and making a decision, whether it's a Glock 19 or a Smith & Wesson M&P Shield or a CZ uh, P07 or whatever it is that tickles you fancy, go and pick the firearm you want and purchase it, okay? Buy it because you first need to buy it before you get the paperwork that allows you to do application for or apply for the license. You can't first apply for the license and then go pick a gun. The gun needs to be individually licensed, all right? So go pick a firearm, purchase it, get the paperwork for it. Now you need to go get your motivation sorted out. If it's for self-defense, you're gonna need to write a motivation as to why you need this firearm for self-defense and self-protection. If it's for sport, you're gonna need to motivate why you need this firearm for the specific sport you intend participating in. Or you're gonna, you know, if you're a hunter, same story. If you don't know how to do this, come to me and I will help you. I'm not gonna write it for you, but I can send you in the right direction. Otherwise, go check out guys like Motivus, that's M-O-T-I-V-U-S, and Max, if you're watching this, I hope I spelled that correctly. I'll also link to them in the description and they can help you writing motivations. They're very good at this stuff. It costs a bit of money, but it's worth it if you don't know how to write your own. And they generally, well, are not generally, I know Motivus has a really high success rate, okay? It's in generally a good idea to have a lawyer help you in any event, because if your license gets refused for a stupid reason, they can appeal it for you. If you know what you're doing and you can appeal it yourself, you're probably not watching this video anyway, right? So get your motivation sorted out and all your supporting documentation as to why you're motivating for this particular gun. It's also not a bad idea to go find a sport club or a shooting club near you that's convenient or if it's not near you, one that you like and joining it as a member because that might not necessarily be required for you to motivate successfully for your license. I mean, if it's a self-defense license or a section 15, which is occasional sport, you definitely don't need to be a member of a club, but it's a good idea. It's a good idea to be a member of a club because you need somewhere to train, you need somewhere to develop your skills later. And guess what? It's usually filled, or clubs are usually filled with really friendly people that will help or rather will allow you to use their guns for practice if you ask them nicely under their supervision, they can teach you some really good stuff. And it's just generally highly recommended to become involved in the community as early as possible. Okay, and expose yourself to it as much as possible. So you've got your safe sorted out, you've, got, uh, you've picked and bought your gun, you've got your paperwork sorted out. Now all you have to do is wait for your competency certificate to be approved. The moment it's approved, and it's ready at the police station, you go fetch it, complete what's left of the paperwork that you might have to complete, and then you hand that motivation <laughs> and that firearm license application in, and you could possibly even do it on the same day, if not the next. And then it'll get sent off, hopefully, to the CFR in Pretoria as quickly as possible, and within the next 90 days, you can have an approved firearm license. Now, this sounds horrendous. It sounds like it's six months, and yes, it is horrendous that it takes that long for a law-abiding citizen to get a gun license and that's hopefully something that through enough pressure we can change but bear in mind it's worth it okay i've licensed about nine firearms i'm going to license some more and some of the weights have been horrendous and some of the weights have been really short the one was only two months the first one is always the hardest and it's always the worst and it always takes the longest for some reason so you need to just be prepared to exercise a little bit of patience with this Okay, again, if you need help or encouragement, Baratus is here kind of for this purpose. Okay, while you're at it, go pick a gun rights organization you like, whether it's Gun Owners, gun owners of SA, GOSA, or somebody else, pick a gun rights organization that fights for rights and join them as well while you're busy with this. Do some additional research on the internet, some reading about how the law works because you never know enough once you get out of the proficiency. Uh, or rather once you've been declared proficient and competent 
Always do more reading, get involved, become hungry and voracious for knowledge and self-improvement because this is really a journey. But I'm kind of now going off the track about how do you license again. That's the long and the short of it, really. Um, it's not that complicated. It's not something that you should find intimidating. And it's not a process that has to be lonely or that you have to go through without help. Please reference my articles. Please reference what else you, you need and get in contact again. I'm so, I've been saying this over and over. Get in contact if you need help. In the meantime, if you want to support Paradis, uh, link below to you. Bertrus, who I will hopefully, their beans, be drinking in front of you soon. Every packet you buy, we get some of the money. They've been very, very generous. Uh, and we also have a snap scan slash, sorry, zapper code that will go on the screen in the credits that you can donate either drinking money or pay for internet if you so feel inclined. Thank you for watching. I hope this video has been helpful and do tune in next time. Have a fantastic rest of your day. Thank you and Bye-bye.